Our scripture this morning is from Luke 7, 36 through 39 and 44 through 48, the New International Version. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Then Jesus turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. There are three characters in this story. Which one do you most identify with? Is it the woman, sinful, repentant, humble, and grateful? Is it Jesus, compassionate and forgiving? Or is it the Pharisee, proud, judgmental, and arrogant? Have there been different times in your life when you were like each of these characters? And where is God's call to you in your answer? Our topic today is how we show love by showing forgiveness. My inspiration is the book, The Jesus Priorities, Eight Essential Habits by Christopher Markle. The Greek word for forgiven in our scripture today is a theomai, and it's an interesting word. Its primary meaning is to send away or depart. It also means to yield up, expire, let go, disregard, keep no longer, and to go away, leaving something behind. We usually think of love as embracing, drawing us close. But is it possible to love someone by letting go? Maybe of our anger, resentment, and judgments. Is it possible to love someone by disregarding or sending away? And what is it exactly that needs to be disregarded or sent away? Here's the hard truth. We might be called to forgiveness, but it requires a lot from us. Maturity, compassion, love for our neighbor that is not selfish, but sacrificial some tough stuff, which is why we really need Jesus to lead us. In our scripture today, Jesus gives mercy, love, by forgiving the woman at his feet instead of judging her as the Pharisee did. The scripture is clear. She was sinful. She had offended God with her behavior. Her posture on the floor in the dust shows her lowly position as a penitent. Did she deserve Jesus's forgiveness? Of course not. It's not about what she or we deserve. Jesus gave forgiveness as pure grace, a free, unmerited gift. And he calls us to do the same for those who have wronged us. Jesus not only forgives, but he also offers the opportunity to change 
through that forgiveness. And he knows that lives are transformed when people are shown mercy and a better way to live. That can only be done with love. We will never get there with the Pharisees' judgment, criticism, and heartlessness. The woman's life, your life, and the lives of those we meet are transformed when people are challenged to change by showing them love, which in many cases begins with forgiveness. Jesus teaches another important lesson here. Whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. This was a direct rebuke of the Pharisee. As a Pharisee, the man would have scrupulously followed the Torah, the laws of the Old Testament, and he would have believed that in following those laws, he had achieved righteousness. He therefore believed he had no need for forgiveness. And not needing forgiveness himself, he had no compassion for those who do need it. Here's what I think is the takeaway for us. If you want to be a forgiving person, to follow your calling to follow Jesus, don't be like the Pharisee. Tap into your own sin and your own need for forgiveness. Are you perfect without sin? Are you needful of forgiveness? If not, then realize that the person who has offended you is in the same position. When we face with humility our own sin and need for redemption, it's easier to see it in others and easier to grant it. I said earlier that granting forgiveness is hard for us. What's often even harder is forgiving ourselves. Here's something to think about. Everything Jesus said or did around forgiveness, including dying on a cross, applies to you. Consider this little scene from Matthew 18, 21 and 22. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Should I forgive as many as seven times? Jesus said, not just seven times, but rather as many as 77 times. This was Jesus's way of saying, don't necessarily count how many times you forgive people, but forgive them a lot. Do you forgive yourself like that? True confessions, I find it difficult. I tend to remember everything I've ever done that I regret and beat myself up about it over and over. When that happens, I just have to take a breath and be very purposeful in saying a prayer of relinquishment, of letting go. Jesus died so that you would know you are forgiven. You will honor him and his gift by accepting it. Forgiveness means letting go of our own burden of sin and resting in the peace of knowing we are redeemed. Loving and forgiving our neighbor doesn't mean being a doormat. Forgiveness isn't the same thing as remission of consequences. When we forgive someone, we may have the power to decide they shouldn't face outcomes for their offense. Sometimes that's entirely appropriate. If a friend says something that hurts your feelings, you're probably not going to seek ways to punish them. On the other hand, if someone runs a stop sign and T-bones your car, they're going to get a ticket and face legal consequences. That's justice. You can still forgive them and are called to do so if you can, but they still get the ticket. If a friend violates a confidence, you can forgive them, but never again share personal information with them. That's an appropriate consequence that has nothing to do with forgiveness. In our call to worship this morning, we were told to be angry 
without sinning. It's natural and okay to be angry when we are offended. We are just called to do that without resorting to sin. Forgiveness means that we let go of judgment, of hard-heartedness, of obstacles to relationship, so we can live in peace with that person. It doesn't mean we have to accept and allow bad treatment. Finally, sometimes forgiveness is more of a journey than a destination. There are times we are so wounded by the misdeeds of others that forgiveness cannot be like a short trip to church. It might be a long journey through valleys of despair and mountains of hurt. It may be a process of months or years. It may feel like one step forward and two back. We may never actually arrive at a place of total peace and reconciliation. Sometimes it's not even safe for us to reconcile or it's impossible because the person who wronged us has moved on or passed away. Sometimes the only relationship we can have with that person is in our heart. This is all okay and acceptable to the God who loves you profoundly. We aren't called to be perfect, but we are called to walk with Jesus. As long as you are on the journey, God is with you. Forgiveness means letting go of judgment, of criticism, of resentment, and hard-heartedness. It means releasing all in us that hinders relationship. What better way to love our neighbor than to share with them the grace that Jesus shows us? Let's pray. Merciful God, we thank you for unending grace, for your relentless gift of forgiveness and reconciliation. May we have humility to receive it. Grant us power and courage to share the gift with others. Give us open hearts to love our neighbor without spite or judgment so that all everywhere can participate in your kingdom. In the name of our Savior, amen. And now, people of God, go in peace, forgiving and accepting forgiveness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.